the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my pain. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Player General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine, a clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress where great minds and skilled hands await man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Player General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Diagnostics office, Miss Parker speaking. Yes, just a moment for you, Dr. Kildare. Please. Well, Jimmy, your sins have found you out. Oh, no, my hands are clean, my heart is pure. Mm. Thanks, Parker. Kildare speaking. Hello, Jim. This is Ed Dana at Precinct Headquarters. Ed, how are you? Oh, can't complain. Mm-hmm. Was well, this a social call or a business? I'm afraid it's business. Uh, are there any patients in the jail ward at the moment? No, no, it's empty. And I hope it stays that way. Sorry, Jimmy. It isn't going to. Oh? We just caught Nick Mazzetti, the guy who held up that armored truck four days ago. He needs a doctor. I see. He's been carrying two bullets ever since the robbery. Hasn't had medical attention. He's in bad shape. We're bringing him over in a police ambulance. Mm, all right, Ed. See you when you get here. So long. It was Lieutenant Dana. You're bringing over a prisoner named Mazzetti, the one the newspapers call the payroll bandit. Was he shot up? Two bullet wounds that happened during the holdup. He hasn't had a doctor. Hmm. Oh, that could be bad. Yeah. Parker, you'd better set up an emergency operating room. Oh, all right, Dr. Kildare. Well, police case is always bad, Dr. Gillespie. Means armed guards on the ninth floor, and you never know what the patient's going to try. You work your head off to pull him through, and then turn him over to the state. Well, at least he lives a healthier life in his cell. Not in this case. Payroll messenger was killed during the robbery. He's up for first degree murder. Pardon me, is this where. Yeah, come on in, Ed. Oh, hello, Jim. I didn't recognize you. All you guys look alike in those uniforms. <laughs> yes, we do. Dr. Gillespie, Lieutenant Dana. Glad to meet you, Doctor. How are you, Lieutenant? Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't shake hands. You're unclean, you know. Huh? He means surgically unclean, Ed. We've <laughs> already scrubbed up. Now, oh, uh, what's the location of those bullets? I haven't seen the x-rays. Well, one's high up in the left shoulder. Mm-hmm. The other one's in the chest, the uh, area right around here. Oh, yes. You probably call it by some name a yard long. That's the only thing that gives the medical profession any position of prestige, Lieutenant Dana. The fact that most people don't understand Latin. Dr. Kilder, we're ready whenever you are. Oh, all right, Diana. Uh, did Parker tell you about the case? He just said police emergency, bullet wounds. That's right, two of them. One's probably a probe, and the other's in the chest, so it may take an incision. All right, Doctor. Oh, and instead of local anesthetic, I think under the circumstances we'd better have the patient unconscious. Hyclopropane? Right. Okay. See you inside. Mm. Well, everything's ready to go but the patient. You ought to be here any second now. Sergeant Riley's bringing him up on a stretcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riley, by the way, will stand guard the rest of the day and evening. I'll send a relief at midnight. What's likely to happen to this fellow, Lieutenant? He killed a man, Dr. Gillespie. Mm. Incidentally, I'd like to be present in the operating room when you take these bullets out. I take them and mark them for evidence. 
Well, just crawl into one of those white robes, put on a face mask. Am I in the right place? Yeah. Wheel them in, Riley. Hmm. Well, heart seems to be holding up all right. His color's good. You really like it, huh? Oh, you're conscious. How do you feel? Fine. How do you feel? He's a tough cookie, Jim. I don't think you'll get far talking to him. Lousy copper. Why don't you drop dead? Like that payroll messenger. Lousy copper. Well, now that the social amenities are taken care of, let's go to work. <laughs> Deeper than it looked. Tighter, too. Number seven forceps, please. Here you are, Doctor. Oh, thanks. Is it flattened out any, Jimmy? No, I don't think so, but it's right in the center of that uh, muscle group. The round nose 38 shouldn't have flattened much unless it hit a bone. Fun, Doctor. Oh, thanks, thanks. Four days with these wounds not dressed? I don't know, Jimmy. He's running a pretty high fever. Wait a second. I think I've got it here. If I can just hold... Onto the... There. Well, Ed, I guess you'll want this. Yeah, yeah, it's evidence. Just drop it in this box, if you will. Thanks. I'll seal this now, and you fellas can sign it when you're through. How's his pulse? Still strong, Jimmy. Oh, he has an amazing constitution. Mazzetti's tough all the way through. I'll be glad enough when we can move him out of the hospital and into a jail cell. Well, you'll have him guarded, Lieutenant Dana. What could happen? Well, nothing, actually, but I'll still sleep easier when he's locked up. <laughs> he even looks dangerous under the anesthetic. Oh, we'll be careful, Ed. I'll probably take care of his wounds myself. I'll speak to whichever nurse is assigned. You can speak to her now if you like. I met... You? Oh, now, Diana, I'm not sure that you I think that's... You heard what the lieutenant said? Nothing's going to happen. Oh, no, of course it isn't, but still, I... Eh. Well, let's get that other bullet. <laughs> you say, Dr. Gillespie. Maybe silly, but it's dark outside, and I won't walk across the street to that lunchroom alone. All right, Parker. All right. Sit there and starve to death, then, for all I care. I'll buy you dinner if you'll go with me. I had dinner an hour ago. Oh. Well, then I'll just call up and have him send over a sandwich. No, uh, no, you don't. Uh, put that phone down. Well, I like that. There'll be no more eating in this office. You know what I found yesterday folded up in old lady Sprotley's pathology record? No, what? A slice of salami. I never eat salami. No, somebody did. Now, go on over there and eat your dinner. I couldn't eat a bite just thinking of that criminal. Oh, confound it, Parker. He's on the ninth floor under guard. What is it to worry about? Well, you just never know, Dr. Gillespie. You never know. Never know what, Parker. Oh, she's seeing armed killers around every corner, Jimmy. Even scared to walk across the street to Sullivan's. <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about Miss Eddie, if that's it. Uh, Diana says he's still delirious. Yeah, not so tough after all, huh? I guess those four days of fever and infection took a heavier toll on it seemed. He was evidently going on his nerves. Yeah. I noticed that even under the anesthetic. He was as taut as a fiddle string. He's worse now. Diana says he's been rolling and tossing continuously from one side of the bed to the other. I don't know whether it's nerves, fever, or just his imagination working overtime. Well, it's got plenty to work on, Jimmy. Yes, it has. Uh, by the way, Parker, I, uh, I uh, haven't had dinner either. Oh, Dr. Kildare, would you? I would. Come on, we'll protect each other. Mr. Mazzetti, you've got to lie still. You keep irritating those incisions. Now, you try to lie still and get some sleep if you can, huh? Is everything all right in here, miss? Oh, yes, fine, Sergeant Riley. Except he's so restless. I'm afraid he'll tear his bandages loose. And if I was in his shoes, I'd be restless, too. Oh, so. 
Too bad. Ah, don't waste no sympathy on him. He never had any for anybody else. Uh, hey, um, mm-hmm. I've been sitting outside the door here wondering something. Oh? I noticed you're not wearing no wedding ring. Wondering if you ever go out with fellas. Oh, yes, Sergeant. I go out quite often. You do? With Dr. Kildare. Huh. Well, I'll be outside. Call me if you want. Thanks. I will. <laughs> Here, now. What are we going to do with you? Mr. Mazzetti, you've got to lie still. <laughs> Careful. Oh, good heavens. Sergeant Riley. What's the matter? What's going on? No, silly. Put that gun away. He's fallen out of bed. I need some help. Okay. Take his shoulders. I'll take his feet. Careful with the bandage. Okay. All right, All right. now. Uh-huh. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Guess that ought to hold. All right. Wait. Get your hands up. What? Over what? against the wall there. Face against it. Move. Shut that door, sister. Don't try anything. All right. Okay. Over there beside him. Thanks for the gun, Flatfoot. Thought I was through, huh? What are you planning to do? Well, I think the first thing is to get rid of the cup. That's the most brutal thing I ever saw. Then keep remembering it. We'll get along better that way. What are you going to do? I mean, what are we going to do, baby? We're playing together now, just you and me, all alone. Cozy, huh? <laughs> say, Dr. Gillespie, you're not a defenseless woman. Neither are you. And at least I enjoyed my dinner in peace, thanks to Dr. Kildare. A pleasure, Parker. Instead of sitting over there expecting any minute to be shot in the back. Parker, it would have to be in the back. That face of yours had stopped the most hardened desperado. Well, I like that. You wouldn't if you had to look at it every day. I don't mean that. I mean that I mean, I don't... Oh. Kildare speaking. What? Yes, I'll be right there. Dr. Gillespie. What's wrong? The night supervisor just found Mazzetti's guard slugged, lying in the room. What? Mazzetti and Diana are gone. By the great horn spoon. Parker, call Lieutenant Dane at precinct headquarters and tell him to get over here fast. Turn to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, that's a terrible gash on his head, Dr. Kildare. Do you suppose maybe his skull's fractured? It could be. We'll check it in a minute. First, I want to get him conscious enough to answer a few questions. Hand me another ammonia ampule. Oh, here you are. Now, breathe in now, Riley. Deep breath. <coughs> where, where, where am I? You were knocked out, Riley. Uh, was that he got my gun? Yes, yes, I know. Now listen, Riley. Did he say where he was going? He pretended to fall out of bed. Mm-hmm. Help the nurse pick him up. He grabbed my gun. Yes, I know. Well, did you know where he was going, or did he say what he planned to do? No, I, he he got. Uh, 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 Oh, he's passed out again. Yeah, check his pulse, Parker. Uh, one thing sure, he's not going to be able to help us any. Come in, Ed. How's Riley? He's conscious a minute ago, but no help. He scarcely knows what hit him. Mazzetti pulled a trick and slugged him with his own gun. And he's got that gun with him now, wherever he is. Yeah, that's right. Well, I've thrown out two fast police cordons, one at six blocks radius and one at a mile. Mm-hmm. Been an APB on the police radio since 20 seconds after I was notified. And we've ordered out the day shift detectives for special duty. We'll get him, Jim. 
He doesn't have a chance. Ed, uh, how much chance do you think Diana has? Well, she's a nurse, and he's got those bullet holes to think about. She's valuable to him, so... Jim, let's not look on the worst side unless we have to. Jimmy, everything's being done that can be done. All you can do now is wait and try and relax. Oh, it's an easy medicine to prescribe, but it's a hard one to take. You're not very relaxed yourself, you know. Well, I feel the same way you do, Jimmy. I couldn't love that girl anymore if she was my own daughter. But our hands are tied. I know one thing, Dr. Gillespie. I'm a physician. And I've always believed in protecting life and saving it. But if he harms Diana in any way, so help me. Ah, oh, no, Jimmy. That kind of thinking doesn't lead anywhere. And Lieutenant Dana said himself... Any that... word yet? No, no, not a thing. What are you carrying there, Parker? Oh, this you mean. Oh, well, it's a nurse's cap. The janitor found it a little while ago. I guess one of the girls... Let, let me see do... that. Well, yes, of course, doctor. Jimmy? Hmm, I'd know that perfume anywhere. It's Diana's. Huh? Parker, do you know where he found it? I mean, exactly where. Why, yes. In front of the door of the pathology lab. Dr. But Gillespie, I don't... she dropped it on purpose. And they're still here in the building. No wonder the police hit a dead end. You mean Diana and that killer are right here in the hill? Uh, let her lie there, Jimmy. If we revive her, she'll only have hysterics. Yeah. Look, when you call Ed and have him get over here with some men, I'm I'm going down to that lab. Ah, might be a little dangerous. If the police try to take him, someone will get killed. Alone, I may have a chance. I'll see you later. <laughs> Sweetie? Yes, I'm all right. Well, right. it ain't the doc that took them bullets out of me. That's right. What are you doing here? We thought you were miles away. Well, never mind that. You had a chance to see the gun, so snap off those lights and get over there in front of the windows with the girl. Go on, move. Okay. Hi, baby. Jimmy? This way, you mean? Yeah. You make a nice target against the street lights. How'd you happen to come down here? Well, the hospital still has patients, kidnapping or not. I had some tests to make. Anybody else know about it? No. Most of the staff's gone to bed. Good. Mazzetti, why don't you give yourself up? You don't have a chance. The whole city's hunting for you. They haven't found me yet. They will. Well, better not be here if they do. Because you two will get it before I do. You can count on that. How about letting Miss Verner leave on her promise to keep still? Do I look like that kind of a patsy? If you'll let her go, I'll, I'll help you get out of here. Skip it, Doc. Not so much talk. I like it quiet. Okay. Jimmy, is that my cap? Yeah. You want it? Thanks. Thanks a lot. I said keep your mouth shut. All right, Miss Eddie. You got the gun, so you're the boss. We just work here. Well, there's the floor plan of the lab section. Lieutenant, you can block off that corridor at each end and put men on the ground below the windows. No other way out. So I see. Well, I'll have the boys keep out of sight and just stand by, Dr. Gillespie. But if something doesn't break in the next ten minutes, we'll have to move in regardless. Oh, but my dead body... Now, be reasonable, Dr. Gillespie. You said yourself he didn't even have a plan when he went down there. Well, he will have, though. Just give him time. I'll give him all the time I possibly can. He's a friend of mine, too, you know. Well, he's more than a friend to me. He and Diana Verner are the two people I love most in the world. And so help me, I'm not going to have them killed through some more police bungling. Well, you hit a sore spot there. Uh, we did bungle on it. All right, what do you suggest? That we stand by, Lieutenant. That's all. Just stand by. <laughs> What's 
going on over there? Shifting from one foot to the other, Miss Eddie. Is that forbidden? Just don't try anything, that's all. Okay. Can we have the light on? No. Couldn't be seen from the corridor if that's what bothers you. You'll attract more attention if you knock over something else. Like that bottle you broke. I said no. Bottle? What bottle? I don't know. It, it was one of those on the specimen table. Well, be careful moving around. There's some fairly rough stuff in these bottles. What do you mean, rough stuff? No, oh, bacteria, germ cultures, virus specimens. It's a pathology lab, you know. There isn't really much danger as long as no one gets caught on the broken glass. You, then, there's, you go on over and turn on the light. Just turn it on and go right back where you were. Okay. Now stay there. Doc, take a look at that broken bottle and see if you can tell what was in it. Sure. I don't know what you've got in mind, but... Hmm. Here's the piece with the label. Adepts on ion hydrants. Well, Miss Eddie, you picked the worst specimen in the lab to knock over. Yeah? What's it mean? Leprosy. Leprosy? You'd both better stay away from the table. One sliver of this glass, and it's just too bad. Yeah, but... Look at your hand. Yeah, I, I cut it when I broke that bottle. What? Let me see that. Uh-oh. Doc, I... I'm not going to get leprosy, am I? How long ago did this happen? Oh, I don't know. It was when we first came in here. It's, it's been almost four hours now, Jimmy. But not quite four hours, huh? No. Oh, all right. Diana, make a 3cc aqueous solution of panopon hydrochloride. It's in the middle cabinet there. All right, Jimmy. Now, there should be a case of hypos here in the table drawer. What's the pitch, Doc? Is there any chance... Is there anything you can do? Yes, if it hasn't been four hours yet, there's a good chance. No, here we are. Here's the solution, Jimmy. Oh, thanks. Now, I'll fill this syringe. Look, Doc, if you're trying to pull something, don't forget I got a gun on you. Zetty, I don't care whether I give you this hypo or not. It's entirely up to you. Okay, go ahead. But just don't try nothing. All right. Now, let's have your left arm. Tourniquet? Yeah, thanks. Now, we'll... Find a vein. Uh, this needle's gonna sting, so be careful with that trigger. Go ahead. Okay. There. That ought to do the job. <laughs> the fee is five dollars. Send the bill to the police commissioner. How much longer are we gonna have to stay here? Until I get ready to leave. That may be any time from now until... Oh, you may be a little dizzy from that shot, but it'll pass over in a few seconds. Yeah, I feel like it. I mean, like... Ah, Dove me. That's ridiculous. Double cross. Watch it, Jimmy. He's going to shoot. Yeah, I've got him. You missed, Miss Eddie. You doped me. Well, we can breathe easy, maybe. He's out cold. Jimmy. All right, Miss Eddie. Over. Come on in. It's unlocked. Where is he, Jim? There on the floor. To sleep. Asleep? What happened, Jimmy? Oh, he cut himself on a broken lanolin bottle and for some reason got the idea he had leprosy. Leprosy? That's right, Ed. Noticed the cut on his hand, and when Diana said he'd broken a bottle, I played a hunch. You see, he doesn't understand Latin. Yeah, we cured him with a shot of morphine. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> he certainly looks cured, all right. He sure does. Only confounded, Jimmy, I still don't understand what a lanolin bottle's got to do with the fact that he... Lieutenant, which way'd they go? In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, morning, Jimmy. Hi. 
Come on in. Anything new today, Dr. Gillespie? No, a couple of patients waiting for diagnosis, but I haven't had time to see them yet. Oh. What's with you? I was just up the ninth floor checking the Mazzetti setup. Ed's certainly taking no chances this time. Oh? He's using three guards, one inside the room and two outside. The door stays open all the time. <laughs> I imagine. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare. Good morning, Parker. By the way, Parker... Here are the assignment sheets for nurses on the Mazzetti case. Mm -hmm. Give them to Molly Bird, will you? All right, Dr. Gillespie. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Miss Brawley. Quarter midnight, Miss Jenkins. Of course, from midnight on, is the worst. Miss Parker! Yes, right, Parker. All alone up there in the darkness. With. Oh. Well, by the great horn spoon. Jimmy, will My you... dear Dr. G, I'm way ahead of you. Here's the smelling salts. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Georgia Ellis, Barton Yarborough, Barney Phillips, and Vic Perrin. Dick Joy speaking.